Cinema 4D 2026 just dropped a few days ago, and it has been, well, pretty disappointing for many. Maxon even rolled out a brand new logo for Cinema 4D as part of a unified product branding. But aside from that cosmetic change, the actual software update is quite modest. By Maxon's own account, it is a small update with only two notable new features and then a list of bug fixes. As you might expect, this had the Cinema 4D community talking, and not all of it is positive. But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the Super Hive market is having a sale right now with discounts on thousands of products, including add-ons, procedural geometry note tools, courses, material packs, you name it. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So what is actually new in Cinema 4D 2026? Honestly, just I said, a couple of things. One improvement in the simulation department. The new release updates Cinema 4D's liquid simulation toolset with better collisions against rigid bodies, so fluids interact more accurately with seen objects. The other highlight is a small workflow tweak. New controls for interactive duplication of objects in the viewport which makes it easier to copy objects on the fly without digging through menus. And that's basically it for core Cinema 4D changes. Most of the exciting stuff is actually on the rendering side. Since Redshift 2026 comes bundled with Cinema 4D, naturally, users do get some rendering goodies. Redshift's update introduces a new procedural cloud object for realistic volumetric clouds, in addition to an enhanced physically sun and sky system. Also improvements to bump maps and an upcoming faster texture displacement method. It also adds support for things like ACES 2.0 and new GPU architecture to keep rendering tech up to date. These conditions are neat, but they are part of Redshift other than innovation in Cinema 4D itself. Under the hood, the 2026 release is mostly about polishing and performance. Maxon focused on squashing bugs and making minor stability tweaks across Cinema 4D. There are numerous fixes in areas like modeling, MoGraph, simulation, etc. But you won't see dramatic speed boosts or overhaul tools. But some annoying issues, like the former's causing slowdowns or some file export scratching, have been resolved in this version. In terms of UI and workflow, nothing major changed. The interface and features look pretty much the same as they did before, aside from the new logos and icons. The new look is mostly that refreshed logo and a cohesive design across Maxon's products, not specifically a redesign of Cinema 4D's UI or navigation. On the integration front, Maxon did ensure that Redshift 2026 ties in smoothly. They mentioned improved Redshift integration and performance with Cinema 4D scenes as part of this update. They also updated Cineware for Unreal Engine alongside this release, so you can continue to round trip Cinema 4D content to Unreal Engine without any hiccups. Now, you would think that with a fancy new version named 2026, which is supposed to be the major release of the year, you would expect the community to expect something bigger, and you would be right. A lot of Cinema 4D users were hoping for more significant updates, or at least some major features. In the past year, Cinema 4D's development delivered some pretty substantial tools. For example, in 2025.3, which is a mid-year update, introduced an entire GPU-accelerated liquid simulation system and new DIM workflow support, along with other goodies like new spline modifiers, a new boolean system, and even an AI-driven search function. Given that momentum, many assumed the 2026 version would continue the trend with something of similar scale. There were talks in forums of desires of many changes that wanted to be made, like improved modeling tools, updates to the animation and character system, better physics or particle tools, or deep performance improvements, like a faster viewport or more GPU-accelerated workflow. In fact, some users specifically expected Maxon to push harder on these modern needs. Some even noticed that Maxon haven't been pushing for real-time performance, in addition to other next-gen enhancements, especially as competing 3D software have been moving fast. So while the hype for Cinema 4D release is always a bit cautious, people definitely had their fingers crossed that Cinema 4D 2026 would bring at least a couple of exciting surprises, or at least some workflow improvements. However, this excitement quickly turned into disappointment once the release came out. 
The general sentiment is that Cinema 4D 2026 feels like more like a minor patch than a true big release. Users have pointed out that Maxon basically packaged up some bug fixes and called it a new version, largely because it is a scheduled full update tied to their annual branding cycle. With only two small features, a lot of folks are saying that this should have been just a 2025.4 update or something along these lines, rather than warranting a whole new year designation. As you can imagine, the effort of upgrading software, especially in studio pipelines, doesn't feel justified by such a meager change list. As someone in the Cinema 4D community put it, a nothing burger major release, with mostly fixes and only a few token features, making it hardly worth the time to migrate from Cinema 4D 2025. There is also a feeling that Maxon might have rushed out this release mainly to align with marketing needs, keeping in mind the new branding and product lineup update, rather than because the software itself was ready with major enhancements. For those paying hefty annual subscriptions, an underwhelming update like this can sting actually. It raises the question of whether the continuous subscription model is delivering enough value for the cost, and surprisingly, community reactions have been loud and largely negative, expressed with a healthy dose of humor and sarcasm. Lots of people on Reddit and many forums have been actually mocking this release. One person joked, this is the biggest update ever with a new logo, poking fun at the fact that the most visible change was actually the icons and the logo. So to say that it is underwhelming would be an overstatement to describe the 2026 release. Some Cinema 4D users feel like Maxon's announces absolutely jack nothing. Weirdly enough, some long-time users even link Cinema 4D stagnation to Autodesk famously slow 3DS Max updates while the competition like Houdini and Thunder keep blowing everyone's mind with rapid innovation that took place in the recent years. And the fact is, quite a few people are openly discussing jumping ship. So basically the question that begs to be asked, are they actively trying to get people to switch to Blender and Houdini? Because for some Cinema 4D users, it actually feels like a sinking ship. Even on YouTube the response was rough. The official launch video of 2026 got slammed in comments. And if you take a look at it, most of the comments are negative. And I personally don't know why companies like this that have major software such as Cinema 4D expect the users to be happy or at least not to be upset with a mediocre release like this. I think Maxon should be more careful about their major releases because Blender is gonna take the market share of Cinema 4D users that want something good while affordable, which is basically nothing because Blender can now do cool stuff when it comes to motion graphics Combine that with add-ons and you've got yourself something that rivals Cinema 4D when it comes to motion graphics. And the worst part is competition with Houdini. In the last decade, they are deliberately targeting Cinema 4D user base by introducing amazing tools that can generate results similar to what Cinema 4D can do and allows even more complex effects with ease. And this is especially important for big productions and studios. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up also, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.